Everything's better with a bit of weight behind it, isn't it? <laughs> Christmas. Welcome! Welcome! Happy New Year! It's 2023 and we're starting the new year draft free. We've got heaters on. We just one heater and it's doing its job. One it's... heater, which is so Joe old. takes it round. I think room. I had that at uni. I don't no. think when we got it. I don't know. Maybe, anyway, maybe the garage. today is all about getting draft free, which is getting the patio door fitted, whoop, whoop, which is whoop. nice. A bit lighter in here. And also how we went about sealing and windows. insulating around all of our windows and doors. We two, did two different methods. So we... Um, There's loads. It's quite a, quite a good mix, this video. So anyway, without further ado, enjoy the video. We'll see you in a minute. No, you won't see me. No, you won't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll replace Joe with my father. <laughs> This morning's challenge is to make a start getting our patio door fitted, or not make a start, get it done. Because we need it in, we need it weather tight, and at that point we're also thermally tight because we've been heating the space and it's been holding the heat well, but we've only had a membrane here. We had a bit of Kingspan there for, for a while. When we built the walls, we built with our floor plate continuous all the way through, even the internal doors. So at this point we can now cut those flush and uh, cut them out this one will come out and our door will sit down on here. It's a sliding UPVC door, but I managed to find the front door on Facebook. I think it was like a X demo or a returned order. And when the guy came to deliver it, he, uh, he had a sign written down. He was obviously a window fitter. So I got him to quote for this and it was fairly, I think it was a thousand pounds all in. Because it's black, it costs a bit more. Um, but anyway, at least he measured it. So. I can blame him if it's wrong. Then once we have that in, later on, I will be showing you exactly how we insulated and sealed around all of our new windows. Well, it's ripped off the top layer of our chipboard, which is good. It kind of shows how good the adhesive was. I think we used multi-stick that time around, but either way. So we'll tidy this up and then we've prepped up our opening. We've got more of that tape arriving. It's slightly different. It's a Tyvek tape. That'll arrive tomorrow. But for now, we're going to get the frame up in place. Just make sure it fits for a start and then uh, get it all plumbed up. It definitely fits, which is good news. So we're now going to tip it out, um, get some seal, uh, seal the bottom first, seal it back in, and then we can start packing and fixing it in. Why? What gap have you got? I've got about. Oh, I'm touching. Oh no, I've got about five now. Yeah, which is fine for time. Just... And then the tape that arrives, we'll take these buttons off, put the tape on, and then the buttons go back over. Good there. Yeah. Right, the frame is in. Uh, of course, our, because we're on, a, on wheels, on a chassis, nothing is completely flat, which means that really, you can't just plumb everything up and assume everything is level. Therefore, we've made sure everything is at right angles, so that everything is square to the floor. It just means that then, rather than setting this perfectly level, if we move the cabin in the future, or when we come to sell it, when the floor is leveled out again, 
this will always sit true. But there's enough fixings in now that we can get the glass in, get the beads back in, and then hopefully that will close nicely. Right, we are a little way on now, and we're getting to the point where we need to seal up our windows. There's snow on the ground outside, but fortunately, we got them in just in time because it is now pretty cozy in here, and we can keep the heater on, or even just put it on for a little while in the morning, and it's staying warm. So I'm gonna show you two options for insulating the gap, the void. What is the go-to method for most installs? Well, it's just to get a can of expanding foam and gun it in there and just hope it fills the void sufficiently, trim it back, and then put your reveals in, or in this case, we're using our tape. We're gonna be doing that method, and I've already done it on a few, uh, but equally, I mentioned it in a previous video, we're gonna look at other options. So that option that we're looking at is sheep's wool or any soft insulation you could do this in. Now there is a product made by sheep's wool insulation, which is like a insulating rope, I guess you'd call it. All it is is the, the sheep's wool twisted into a sort of a soft rope. Uh, but we've got so much of this lying around, like off cuts on the floor and things like that, that I've just been going along and using it up like this. So the nice thing is I can tell when I've fully filled it. I can push it, I've done this uh, section, most of it already, so I can push it all the way through until I feel that it's hitting the tape on the outside. So I know that there is no big air gap in there. What that means is, instead of using it, uh, an insulating, expanding foam, where you're basically trusting that it's gonna expand where you want it to expand, which really is not gonna happen, um, I, on the other window, when I did use the gun, I was making sure that I was lined up straight. So when it was jetting in the expanding foam, it was shooting it right to the back and filling it from the back. Otherwise you can end up putting a bead in, like, almost like silicon, and it's probably only filling the first few, well, probably only 20 mil, uh, if that, which is no good. Whereas this, I can feel that I've pushed it right to the back. So up here, I've only put a tiny bit in, so I can work more of this right into the back. My excuse to myself for going with expanding foam was that the gaps were too small to fill with the wool, but as long as it's a little bit wider than the width of this, I, it seems like I can fit it in just fine. And even down the bottom down here we're on three or four mil packers, which means I've got loads of space to work this right into the back. Just about to make a statement saying, oh, this is a good way to work with whatever soft insulation you're using. But I just tried it with a bit of mineral wool and it doesn't work in the same way. You can, but this cheap wool is obviously loads and loads of individual fibers. So they just seem to r roll in there much easier. Whereas rot wool, it's kind of, I don't know, it just seemed to bind up and it was clumping. Also, if you're insulating up and around older windows, you know, timber windows, like, I mean, these are timber windows, so this is gonna be a much kinder way of working with wooden windows, because as soon as you start foaming up against them, that's when issues can happen. And if they've, older windows, if they've lasted 100, 200 years, there's something right about that. And if we start kind of cramming in foam after foam and insulation and foils up tight against them, then we're the ones to blame, I guess. These windows are new, but they are wood. And uh, there's quite a few people asking about them. They're made by a company called Kla. They won me over on a Facebook video, uh, Facebook advert about a year ago, and their prices seemed good. They were about five to ten percent cheaper than me going with plastic windows, and I think it was only a three week, four week lead time. They're quite chunky frames, so they look nice. They look expensive. They are probably not high enough spec for us to use in the main house build, but maybe they are. Or if we did, maybe I will go with the aluminium version which is still a wooden window, but it's just clad on the outside. But apart from that, the hardware seems all right. They're slightly different from typical UK windows uh, in that 
they don't have that secondary locking point. But as someone mentioned, we might be able to just change these plates out. Uh, so we have that option. But really, for the price, you know, these were, oh no, testing me, 200 quid, something like that. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. No, no worries at all. Yes, you could paint them. I think they're just powder coated or sprayed. Um, so I'm not sure how thick this paint is. It's not enough to concern me on this building, but that's why I was thinking maybe aluminium on the next one. Um, just simply because you don't know what their build-up is of paint and primers and how long that's going to last on the exposed side. But then again, if you've got big overhangs and they're not actually being battered by the weather constantly, maybe it's fine and you're just going to be able to repaint them, you know, in 10 years' time. And for anyone who's saying that that's a chore, well, you know, 10 years' time, some plastic windows start to look tired and Nowadays, people start painting the plastic windows, so I don't think I'd be too worried about putting, you know, a couple of days in the diary in 10 years' time to repaint windows. All right, our next job on the window, which I've done in the same way on the foamed windows, is start pulling off the release paper on the tape we installed. Now, we installed this tape onto the frames, so it's already bonded onto the wooden frame. Now we're bonding it to the visible section of our stud wall and our OSB. So it's basically creating that air tile la layer on the inside. So that's the first time I've taped with the wool as well. And I would say that the wool is not ideal because it kind of gets under the tape and it stops it from sticking in quite well, not all the way to the frame, it's still completely airtight and bonded. And it's great tape, but it doesn't stick to wool, clearly. Or it does, but that doesn't create a good bond. Uh, so unless the wool maybe was set back 10 mil, might work. Because where we set this tape on our frame, it's a little bit wider than we need, because a lot of the other rooms have a batten, so the wall is a little bit deeper, this reveal. So I'm gonna trim this bit off. One option is that we could have folded it back onto the paintwork, because I'm actually going to put a, an architrave type trim around all of our window frames anyway. Um, but I kind of like the idea of just keeping it trim and flush, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, it's mighty sticky. So there's only one window left to do uh, and then we'll be doing the two doors in exactly the same way. So this is a finished install. Uh, we've got the tape on the outside bonding our window frame to our membrane and that is a super permanent bond. You can't pull that stuff off now. Completely weather tight, I'm really happy with that. This tape on the inside was worth doing but I think it's better paired with the expanding foam to be honest. Um, as much as I really think that the wool is the right way to go with a breathable wall and timber windows, it, I don't know, there's something about how clean that insole was by putting in the foam, trimming it back, tape, done. We're actually going to be putting a, a reveal on the inside and on the outside, and both of those reveals uh, will be painted timber of some sort, and they'll be sealed to the frame as well with a black silicon, or sorry, not a silicon, but a sealant. So we'll actually end up with just another layer of air tightness and weatherproofing. Right, window done, window done, window done. Look at the dog, she's practically moved in in here. We had friends up with a baby, so we, we got a rug out and a heater and this room was quite nice. Anyway, so uh, all of these smaller windows are done. Here you go, here's another example of how it's bonded. It's a really nice tight finish. Uh, of course it'll all be hidden, but we know that that's bonded now. You know, completely draft proof everywhere, completely Completely, completely. This is our picture window, picture to nowhere, but I might be able to see it's a bit, a bit white out there today. My next job is going to be to uh, go out in the snow and lug some flooring in. This is the flooring we've gone for. It's a Click LBT system, Woodpecker was the brand. Uh, we got it through Bradford's and we've got 90 something square meters of it. And it weighs a fair bit. Uh, engineered flooring, laminate, probably would have 
been the same of, or heavier, or well, certainly engineered oak would have been. So I'm not sure there was many other options. I don't know what carpet weighs per square metre, but anyway, I'm gonna bring those pallets across with the tractor, slide them in to start getting them up to temperature because although they're a very stable flooring, we do want things to stay put and not have too much expansion or contraction afterwards. And as these rooms start to warm up a bit now, even though it's not heated 24 seven, it'll bring that flooring up to a better temperature. This room, still gotta paint this room. Fussy, fussy girls not pick their colour paint yet. The last but by no means least is our feature cedar wall. So it does smell amazing in here. <laughs> We've been busy getting these um, sanded. A couple of people on Instagram wondering why we were sanding when we got the planer. Uh, I didn't want these to be planed. I kind of wanted a little bit more rustic sort of saw marks and stuff. However, Joe was quite keen to have it smoother. So the compromise was to belt sand them. Belt sand them to 80. We'll let them dry for another week or so. And then once they're up on that wall, I think we might just give them another rub down to 120. And this is one of the boards straight off the sawmill. I think it would look pretty cool up there, but I, I get what Joe's saying. You want it to be a little bit more tactile and not quite so rough. It's only gonna cling on to cobwebs more. Um, whereas this is what they're like now, belt sanded, and it's looking good. I, I think, you know, that's as good as uh, it needs to be. And like I said, once it's installed, we'll give them a final rub down. I don't want it to be planed all the way through, because if you plane something and you have it perfectly smooth, everything else becomes much more of a distraction. So you'd start realizing exactly how straight your nails are, or you'd see the gaps in between the boards, because remember these are fairly green boards. We're gonna install them as tight as we can up on the wall, but they'll shrink over time. We'll probably end up with a gap about this big, um, you know, four or five mil after a year. And if they were perfectly plain boards with perfectly finished sharp corners, and these gaps, weren't perfectly you know and they weren't even and set out nicely then they would look odd whereas if these are a little bit rough and they've still got a few marks on them and these gaps are a little bit irregular and that there's a little bit of difference between the thicknesses of the board hopefully that will just give a nicer look or at least a more forgiving look that said there's an awful lot of weight in these boards but they do get quite a bit lighter as they dry um, the boards that were on the top of the stack were, I don't know, maybe 30-40% lighter because they've been able to dry out. I've tipped all those battens up, so we've got a 50mm air gap all the way in between, and we've had the heater on, and I'm just hoping that we can speed the process up a little bit that way. I think it's time that you can peel off your sticky tape Ooh, in the background. Okay. So, the couple of things, whilst Jay does the fun bit of peeling off the protective film, oh, the bits yeah. I didn't show because... Right, I didn't think the audio through, did I? Right, hold on. Um, I didn't film a few bits when it came to fitting the patio doors, and I don't know why. Either I didn't press record, or I was just having a nightmare with Dad. Uh, not because it was my dad, but because we were trying to adjust the rollers and everything to make it fit nicely. What we didn't realise is it's far easier to do that once the glass is in. Once the glass is in, things work a bit better. There's more weight behind it. Everything's better with a bit of weight behind it, isn't it? Christmas. So what we were finding is it wasn't, when you close it, it wasn't exactly precisely hitting where it should to align itself with the locking mechanism. So we did a bit of adjuster on the roll, adjustment on the rollers at the bottom. Oh yeah, you just need to back this off. Yeah. Just rip it off for now. That's gonna stay like that um, for a good few years. And I also found that the frame and the door weren't quite lining up even though both were gonna straight and true. What happened is as soon as I put the glass in and got the beads knocked back in, everything was held nice and square and tight and true. And like Joe says, now there's weight. Because before, when it's just an empty frame, you're, you're like, this is never gonna feel slick. Whoa. Guillotine. That's the one you really need to do the outside. But thing, as soon as the glass is in, everything's much nicer. And it's all tickety-boo.
Now with the windows, I used two, the two methods you saw. This is the last one to seal up. You can see this one I've just foamed in. Now you want to use a low expansion foam. The best one I found was the blue Sudal foam. So it's a window or it's an insulating foam it calls itself. It just was a nicer finish. It was slightly more dense, but didn't expand much. And it just was a, a neater job. It was about twice the price though for the tin. Um, this is just a normal low expansion foam. So either way, once that's done, what I did find is this does not stick to the tape at all. So it's really easy to just go in in a minute. We'll just cut down that way, cut down that way, square with the frame. Once that's off, then we can seal it up as planned or as we did in the other room. All right, Noisy. So there is a little sneak peek going on in the background. Uh, we kicked off New Year's Day by getting ceilings up and um, we've done the bedrooms in the same way or a similar way. But just not painted. Not painted, we've gone... Scandi. Up, uh, Scandi, yeah, after knocking the Swedish sauna look and then a couple of Swedish subscribers said, no, that's more finished sauna. Anyway, uh, we have now gone for uh, just a simple pine tongue and groove and it looks nice. So that's what we've gone for. Uh, anyway, we're going to be doing this in probably the next video and I've also got to shoot a little follow-up video on our electrics because there were a bunch of questions on there and two or three really big kind of things you missed out. Things I completely missed out because a lot of people wanted to know certain things, especially because of the way that this is constructed, constructed in two halves. Mm. We're going to shoot that now. Anything else to add? Remember, if you can, do it yourself. I'll see you, see you next, next time. time. Tagline doesn't change for the new year. <laughs>